to use DMR for ham radio, you have to have an amateur radio license and you have to have a DMR radio ID number from uh, radioid.com. If you are planning on creating a hotspot on Braunmeister, you need to register for an account with them too. I paid about $144 for my uh, DM1701 plus the hotspot which is a jumbo hotspot from China based on uh, a Raspberry Pi. A good place to start finding out how to upgrade uh, the radio is uh, watching a particular video upgrading the DM1701 to OpenGD77 uh, by Kevin O'Reilly on YouTube. Uh, you'll have to download the latest OpenGD77 CPS and two other pieces of software to flash the DM1701 to OpenGD77. The USB programming cable for the DM1701 is not the same one that's used on the UV5R or the DM1801. You have to include the right programming cable for this radio in your order. It's almost impossible to program it for uh, ham radio without the correct cable. And I didn't have one with my order. When I ordered one, it cost me about uh, 28 bucks. You also have to program an update, a code plug. Uh, the best video for this is uh, one called Making an Open GD77 Code Plug in 20 Minutes. And that's by uh, Lima Bravo Zero Foxtrot India. It's on YouTube. And it worked well for my uh, Ute purposes because I was using Braunmeister and I was also using the Norwegian Parrot and uh, programs, so that made it fairly simple. A coupling basically stores the repeaters, and uh, for me, the Braunmeister talk groups that I'm going to be interested in. I didn't want any analog channels, so I put all my DMR contacts on a single zone and I programmed one channel for the hotspot and a second channel for the local 70 centimeter DMR repeater on RF. Uh, that one only goes into the Norwegian repeaters. So um, if you want to talk out of the country, you probably want to um, get a hotspot. Also, the parrot the talk group number varies according to your country. To start with, I thought I'd try uh, DMR by buying a Baofeng yeah, DM1701 and using a regular 70 centimeter Yagi antenna to try to get into the repeater. Unfortunately, I live on a hillside and the repeater is directly over the top of the hill for me. I figured I'd do the same thing that I did with two meters and point the antenna at an opposing hill so I could bounce it off a hill or a rock to get it over the slope behind us. I tried all directions, uh, including straight away from the repeater and 90 degrees to the repeater and uh, none of that worked at all. For flashing changes in OpenGD77, turn off the radio before you plug in the programming cable. It won't work if the radio is on when you plug it in. You will find two small radio icons at the top of the OpenGD77 page on your computer. If you're making a change to the code plug, don't click the read icon, but only the write icon when you flash the change into the radio. If you click read, it undoes whatever changes you just wrote into the program, which took a while for me to figure out. Uh, save the code plug after making the changes to it. If you add or remove anything from your contact list, only delete the ones that say selected on the OpenGD77 page. If you click clear, all your contacts get deleted. 
Okay, this is for configuring a Raspberry Pi Zero W hotspot. That's a pretty common one. The best uh, page on YouTube I found out for that was called Pi Star Intro Dash Building and Configuring the Pi Star for Ham Radio Digital Modes by Hacked Existence on YouTube. That's a good start for figuring this one out. The part about configuring the hotspot starts about three minutes into the video. My hotspot was already assembled, so I skipped over the beginning. I took a series of snapshots when I flashed the image for opening the hotspot connection onto the SD card. I had a terrible time remembering the order, so I figured the photos might help others to figure out what to expect on the computer screen while you're doing it. Uh, first, you have to look up www.pistar.uk slash downloads. I downloaded the most recent version of Pistar RPI into my computer. I right clicked on the file and I chose to extract all. I downloaded the Raspberry Pi imager from uh, World Wide Web dot raspberrypi dot com dot slash software uh, you have to choose your operating system I needed the software for Windows and I installed that also you'll use this program to transfer the hotspot image the program to the SD card so you put an SD card into your card reader and the imager program will ask you if it's okay to make changes to the computer. This is normal. For the device, I chose the Raspberry Pi Zero option that included the double W type. That means wireless. Mm -hmm. uh, choose the PyStar RPI file you downloaded for your operating system. Mm -hmm. Select the SD storage card to put the image on. I chose use custom so I could also program my network in. The program will ask if you want to edit the settings and uh, it'll ask you to put in your password and network number and then you say yes you want to apply the settings and then it says it's going to format the card and rewrite it and then it does so. You have to take the cover off the hotspot to remove the plastic screen cover. Good luck. Uh, mine was pretty difficult. <laughs> the downloaded image should now be transferred to the SD card. Uh, you move the SD card to the hotspot and then you plug the hotspot into a power source and give it a few minutes to turn itself on. If you don't know the IP address, your Wi-Fi system uh, assigned it. Just type in uh, pi star dot slash into the address line on your browser. If you leave out the dot, it won't find it. Uh, and then you log on to pi star. You should get a new screen. When you choose the configuration page, the IP address will be listed on the bottom window. Or you could continue to use pi star dot slash to get into the hotspot. If you can't get into your network, choose Configure Wi-Fi. That's near the bottom of the page. Uh, SSID means your network name. If it has capital letters, remember the network name is case sensitive. Uh, that's one of the bad mistakes I made. It took me a while. <laughs> and PSK just means pre-shared key. That's the password. So you write that in too. Every time you change one of the sections, you have to click Apply Changes under that section and wait for a few seconds for it to digest the changes. The Pi Star transmits and receives on the same frequency. Uh, some frequencies might not be legal in your country or be too close to a repeater frequency. So make sure the frequency you choose is appropriate and it won't interfere with anyone. 
under uh, MMDVM host configuration. If you choose the OLED type 3, that'll work for some people. And I chose OLED type 6 and then it started uh, working. I could see the writing on the uh, hotspot. There are two kinds of talk groups, uh, static and dynamic. Here in Norway, we use the static channel to make contact since it's always open. And after we make contact, we QSY to a dynamic channel, which has to be chosen and then opened by kerplunking the push to talk button on the transceiver. You won't hear anything on the dynamic channel, even if somebody's talking on it until you click your push to talk button. Uh, to change channels on your contact list, use the green button on the upper left corner of the tastature. It's a 90 degree angle. To select the contact and then click the same button again to select transmit. Uh, you should disconnect from a, any current dynamic talk group you're on before changing to the next one. I've programmed into private talk groups. A TG4000 is for disconnecting from a talk group. Uh, it's a private channel. You can use it when nobody is actually transmitting on the uh, talk group. And the Parrot is a system where you can hear your own voice to check your audio and transmission. The Parrot talk group number varies according to your country. They're both private calls. Uh, they should be entered in your contact list, but on the DM-1701, uh, private talk groups are accessed by clicking the button under the push to talk button. At the same time, you push the um, number button on the tastature. Um, kerplunking, clicking the push to talk, is necessary to join or listen to a non-static talk group on the radio. Uh, you have to choose the talk group number from your contact list or the private call list and enter select transmit before you can transmit to any talk group. Broadmeister has a wonderful internet page called Hoseline. The address is uh, hose.brandmeister.network. Uh, if you click on the player button in the upper right hand corner, you can type in the talk group number you or numbers you would like to listen to. Um, and then you can hear it without having to use the radio. There's a delay, but at least you can listen to QSOs without having to physically join a talk group with your transceiver. I intend to listen to Hoseline on a separate tablet so I can turn off the sound when I'm listening to something else.